a lesson in hard work. This is a copy of my Medium post, which the Prime Gen couldn't open, which is the copy of my LinkedIn post, which the Prime Gen couldn't open. So I've reactivated my university blogging account just for you. I hope you like it. I do. Thank you for this meme. This is a great meme. I remember making this meme. Uh, I originally made this meme to say, uh, uh, what's it called? For Rich Harris and I. Rich Harris and I did a little side-by-side, -side, and I wanted it to look like the usual suspects. And so I made this originally then. Uh, if this is pea color, you need to go to the doctor. Okay? This ain't pea color. If your pea looks like this, go to the doctor. Please. Well, I hope the music doesn't ru ruin that intro. Uh, it is a trend nowadays to say work smart and not work hard. And to say them... Let's see. And to... S Damn it! <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. The forgot gen. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. Let's see. That is equivalent to saying using half your potential. Ooh. Okay. 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 That, that I mean that this is a strong this is strong. Uh that is like lifting weights with one hand. The world record for two-handed uh, weightlifting is more than double the world record for one-handed weightlifting. So one plus one is greater than two in this case. Working smart when combined with working hard has the potential for exponential growth. Okay, okay. I, li I like where this is going. I do like where this is going. Many people think that Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates are incredibly smart individuals, and they got rich because of that. But they don't see the years of hard work and dedication that was behind their success. Uh, besides for Bill Gates potentially stealing a bunch of things from, what was his name? Tim something? Steven something? I can't remember. Uh, but Jeff Bezos, like, you look at some of those old pictures of Amazon. He has, like, he has, like, uh, Doll, K Gary Kildall. Kildall, right? Kill Kildall? Is that the person's name? Anyways, like, Jeff Bezos has this picture of, it's like an Amazon flag, like, a uh, banner. He has some hair, and he's, like, in an office, like, I'm making Amazon, right? So, yeah, I mean, it didn't start off amazing. He had $250,000. I forgot how he got $250,000, and he used that to support himself while he worked for a long time, Right? Well, he had hair at that point. Uh, it is important. Let's see. It's important to work. Uh, let's see. It's an important to stay both smart and hard work together because often only one of them is advertised as the key factor of success. But that is misleading. Society must learn to delve deep into the topic before deciding a verdict and understand concept and issues from a holistic perspective. Okay. Now, I mean, come on. What do you do? Society decides based on a tweet. Okay. Real talk. I go like this. I go to Twitter. And I jump on here, and I go like this. Work hard. Tweet it. Send it now. And guess what? People are going to be pissed. I'm going to get those kind of things. You can do all sorts of different statements like this. Just makes people all sorts of rascally and angry. And now I've also lost where I was. There we go. We're back. Epic tweet. Oh, people are going to get so angry on this one. We'll watch at the end of this, and people will be like, you can, you can get it. Well, most of you are going to jump in that tweet and be like, oh, these nuts. Got him. Oh, got him. Right, I don't want to. I don't want to read that. All right, that is the only way to make real progress. My commitment to uh, to hard work and smart work is by doing every. Let's see, is by working every day and night. Okay, well, sometimes you want to take. You know, you got you got to know when to ease off the brakes, man. I haven't taken a single day off from the office in three years since I completed my bachelor and joined the company. Okay, I you know I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if this is good. You know, like I know there's seasons where you work really hard, and I've been there. I remember my first couple years, I was working wild. And one thing I think that probably makes a difference also is do you have community at your job? I found that when I had community at my job, I worked a lot more hours, right? Um, and two, do you have kids? I think kids make a make a. Uh, make a lot of difference. I don't know if this is satire or not, but I'm just taking this currently as not satire, right? I don't know if this is satire, so I'm just taking it as not satire. Um, but, you know, when I had kids, it greatly changed my hours and how I worked. You know what I mean? Because all of a sudden, there's like a whole new world that I really have to consider. And it really ge it, it genuinely changed who I am. Have I missed a single day of work at the office? No. Do I have a lot of leaves accumulated? Yes. Are a lot of them expiring and have expired? Yes. Have I worked overtime almost every day? Yes. Am I getting paid for overtime? No. Do I care? No. Am I normal? No. Why am I doing this? I'll tell you below. Keep reading. Okay. I, that's 
straight i mean this is a whole strange sentence right here let's find out i have met some incredibly smart people and have worked under some amazingly brilliant minds minds so smart and so foreseeing that i often left awestruck and sometimes confused about the decisions made they can see more into the future than i can right now and that i find and that i find unacceptable they are giants of knowledge and i am a uh, i am but a hobbit okay they work incredibly hard and smartly I love the, the Lee at the end. Uh, that the only resource I am left with, if I'm uh, if I'm to catch up uh, to them, is time. So I must use time as an ally. If I work hard, I work harder for longer. If they make smart decisions, I think and learn for longer. And while they relax or sleep, I'll close the distance between us and the, uh, us slowly but surely. This is a this is a hard this is a hard mentality here. I you know. I'm not so sure about this. Um, the generation of future. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to give my opinion at the end of this. But let's hear. Let's let the person cook. Okay. Let's let them cook. The generation of future is being built now. Enough of looking at success stories uh, through life hacks, or billionaires trying to row their boat through a bridge, or CEO trying to fight each other in a cage match. Okay. That. I mean, that's funny. Focus on improving yourself every day. Uh, this will pay bountiful dividends in the future. So I do agree. I do agree with this statement. You know. Every night or weekend after completing my office work, I try to build the tools and technologies that I might that I think might be useful. Every night or weekend, I try to think about what I can contribute to help the business. This enables me to understand business and technology, and more importantly, learn to uh, to gain a holistic perspective on the world. This is my free life hack to build and deploy production level software for the benefit of myself and the company. I can get my ideas tested in the real world and see their benefits. This enables me to think as a manager, product developer, security uh, knock engineer software developer, artist, UI, UX, etc. Many people in the world do not have the opportunity to work, so when you are presented with one, you must must make the most of it. You must learn not to just do the work, but also to understand the mechanisms and complex processes that govern the work uh, the work going on. This will enable you to contribute more and improve yourself slowly and steadily, becoming the giants you admire. It is important to think as it is to work. Only doing both will lead to true success. Let's let them finish cooking, okay? Hold on. Let's let them finish cooking. Farmers, for example, work incredibly hard. They must possess knowledge of the plants they grow, the seasons, and affect their crops, harvesting methods, best crop storage practices, money lending or borrowing techniques, financing, and so much more. Even after all of this incredible knowledge, they still must go out and work from dawn to dusk and tend uh, the crop each day. I'm incredibly, let's see, I'm in incredible awe of their craft and dedication to hard work. Yeah, people under, people have absolutely no effing idea how much people were, like, one of my good buddies is a potato farmer. Literally works from like 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. for months on end to just get things going, right? And that's part of a farmer's life. It is a, I mean, can you compare the two? I don't know. But it is very, very hard. Like, I, I don't know if you can say they're the same or you should say they're the same. But it's just a very interesting perspective that there are professions that require work that is incredibly different than what we do. I don't buy the whole, you know thought workers if you will can only work for 30 hours a week before becoming burnt out i definitely don't think that that's real uh but i don't think that you can just continuously work the top management of famous companies often comment about how they work 16 18 20 hours or even sleepless uh sleeplessly every day while they uh while this may be expressive hyperbole of the hard work and pressure they face in their jobs as heads of large organization it serves as a reminder to others that no matter how high you reach there is still room to grow higher and if the top management is not sleeping, then we must also strive just as hard and develop ourselves. You know, the problem about not sleeping is that it's kind of a pay me, la pay me now, pay me later problem. You know what I mean? Because if you don't sleep well, you get dementia. You get horrible, horrifying disease problems in your brain. And your brain rapidly gets awful. And I don't think I want that. I want to end well. You know what I mean? Uh, cortisol levels. Yeah, absolutely. Huge cortisol levels. You get all sorts of problems. I like a good amount of hydration, a good amount of exercising, a decently good diet and a lot of exercise and good sleep, right? I think all those are really, really healthy. And then some good like side physical hobbies. And so I do do a little bit of, you know, a little bit of gardening. Uh, I do a little bit of tending uh, the field that I have. I have to like do a lot of weeding and all that. And a little bit of cocaine, of course, absolutely. Just a touch, you know, just a touch to make it fun. But you know, like physical hard work is just different than mental work. And I'm not sure you can relate the two. And they both have their version of burnout. Really hard physical work means that you spend your body fast and then towards the end of your life, you hurt. 
And so there likely is an equivalence. I'm not sure if physical is easier. I don't believe that statement. I'm not sure which one is. It is. You know what I mean? You have no joints left. So one would argue that if you did the same thing with your brain, could you also experience something at towards the end of your life? You know, like, if you really think about it, we've never lived in a world where this much thought is just like freely being worked on, right? This mental work life is a very new world concept, right? You, a thousand years ago, people weren't like, oh, you know what I do? I work from home. Yeah, I sit at home and I, I study. I'm just a studier. Like, you know, like a hundred people got to do that. <laughs> you know, like it wasn't like a huge crowd of people got to do this. So I don't know. I'm not sure. That whole autopilot thing, I also don't know about that. When I was in college, I did literally study math for 16 hours a day to catch back up. Did I think it was bad? No. Was I able to catch back up? Absolutely. Did I become number one in my class? Absolutely. So is it bad? Is it good? I don't know. Are there seasons where you really want to fight hard? I think so. Are there seasons where you need to back off? Absolutely. I, do, I can't. I, I, just, I, don't, I just don't think. Uh, to me, this article is not necessarily an article that I think people should strive for. I think that you're – I am less worried about burnout. I don't think you'll be burnt out if you enjoy – if you can find joy in what you're doing or satisfaction in what you're doing. But I do think it is most certain that you will end up having health problems, and that will lead to a life of despair. Health problems are incredibly, incredibly difficult, and they can be incredibly, incredibly, like, hurt deep down. And – that's not worth it either. You know, I've met some people. There's this guy that will be in chat every now and then, R RxJX. And, you know, he was he was this person. He would work constantly. Dude, he ended up getting some 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 problems, some health problems that affect him for the rest of his life. Well, you know, and he had to completely change his diet, how he exercises, his sleep patterns, and all these different things. And it was really hard on him. And I still think about that a lot because I also was the person that was like, yeah, hell yeah. But then I learned from him and I was like, you got to back off, you know? You got to do something different, you know? Anyways, it is clear that society has evolved so much over the years that we are able to enjoy so many comforts in life. Absolutely. Be happy about what you get in life. Uh, but that has the unfortunate consequence of making a lot of people lazy. Uh, yeah, I think it's easier. To, like, we don't have the same needs, for sure. Uh, I think people people optimize to their situation. It's hard. To, it's hard to say it's lazy, but it's also easy to say it's lazy. I'm not sure. I can't say either way. Uh, the comforts we enjoy uh, are not to be used for showing off to others, but rather to increase our productivity and improve society. I consider it incredibly wasteful when people destroy things, waste food, litter, etc. On that team, while some people, uh, dude, I really am on that team. You know how many hours a year I spend picking shit out of my, my property because people throw it off on the street near us? I do it all the time. It is so frustrating. While some people may enjoy the luxury of having so much food, material goods, etc., they don't consider the impact it has on society. Many videos go viral of such acts, but the wastage is unbearable for me. The incredible amount of work that went into growing those crops slash building those things is completely wasted. Society does not improve by such acts. Uh, we must learn to always respect the money, food, and work of others and use them in such a way to help society. I mean, great ending to this. I, I'm, lo I'm loving the ending to this. I, I think we should be much, much more careful about what we do with things. Even if, like, I even run off well water, and I still try to be very careful with the water I use because it feels free, but that doesn't mean it is free, right? Uh, all of these does not, let's see, all of this does not mean we, must, we mustn't we must take breaks. Taking breaks is incredibly important to energize oneself, but you haven't taken a break. But I think I can, let's see, but I think we can train ourselves to take breaks in a new way. Instead of sitting and browsing the internet, we can think about the future and how to achieve that. Studying, working on, improving ourselves as a leisurely activity. A kind of, let's see, a kind of hardcore lifestyle, as you can say. I do agree that browsing the internet is not a great way to take a break. Because you're still activating your mind, but you're activating your mind on just like the worst form of dopamine hitting. I, like, I, I'm on that team that that's not good, but I think you should be doing like you should be connecting with people or exerting yourself physically or or enjoying more sleep. You know what I mean? Doom scrolling is awful. Doom scrolling is awful. You know what I mean? Unless you're watching the private. Yeah, yeah, keep watching me though. Keep watching. Hey, Tune in. Okay, buddy. Okay. Follow me on Twitch. Give me your Twitch Prime right now. Give me that. Give me that. Um, 
I am suggesting that we make working more enjoyable than seeing random videos on Facebook or looking at memes on Reddit. Uh, I'm actually on this team. I think working is way more enjoyable. I am suggesting that something like reading, watching useful stuff as such as engineering concepts or business ideas on LinkedIn or Udemy, etc. I say LinkedIn because I find more intellectual content here more often. I'm browsing a different LinkedIn then. Oh, watching the Prabhupada counts since he's technically, uh, technically is enlightening us all. Let's go. Got him. Uh, other sites have a higher proportion of distractive content. Certain subreddits can be quite informative as well. Uh, every day I try to change my mindset and I try to find enjoyment in thinking and learning hard concepts. I mean, that's good. This is a good, this is good to have. I have preached this a thousand times, which is a hard thing is a good thing. An easy life is not a good thing. Like, I don't think that I, I'm completely on that team, but there's, there's, once you have, you, you have to measure what is a, you know, what is enough of a hard thing. There's, you know, there's complexities here. Like having a wife and kids, the hard thing is saying no to wanting to learn. The reason why I can't make the progress in OCaml, which is eating me alive, is because I'd rather spend time with my kids or with my wife. And that's hard. That's a different kind of hard. Do you know what I mean? That's a, it's hard in the worst way because there's the lower will, this desire to just like really crush in and do something. I almost probably get dopamine effects from learning and all that. But the higher will says, no, don't think about it. Don't let your mind be distracted. Be engaged with your kids. And man, there's these times where I can feel it creeping, feeling the desire, feeling to want to go do this. And it's like, you have to reel it back. And you, I mean, the hardest part is not just being present physically, but being there like emotionally or mentally or whatever you want to call that, right? Like that is hard. And I find that to be one of the hardest activities ever, but I absolutely love the challenge of being better at that present. Uh, to all my engineering folks less experienced than me, I suggest you build complete microservices on something which can be useful for you and your team. For example, I, I'm this good. I mean, it's good. Yeah, if you're learning how to learn and you want to get a good job, this is a great piece of experience. I think this is great. For example, in my personal case, I built a microservice to collect data from all of our microservices. We had multiple portals to access information from our databases, logging platforms, and so many APIs that are many microservices, etc., that it wasted a lot of time to find, log in, and access them. So on my weekends, out of my own interest, I built a microservice that connected to everything else and provided a common platform to access everything in one go. That, that, that's great experience, by the way. I'm a backend developer who knows backend popular languages like Java, Kotlin, uh, these nuts, Golang, C++, Python, etc. By doing this, I learned front-end technologies like JavaScript, React Framework, etc. I also learned about Docker to build microservices and Nginx to route to different requests for multiple applications running on the same container. I think of this as my mini product and my teammates as my customers. Well, that's good. This is tools developer mindset right here. Every weekend I spend some time thinking about how I can improve my, um, me and my uh, teammates' lives and help boost productivity by adding cool new features. So, I mean, this is a good habit to be in, in some sense. Um, like when I built the tool that I'm currently working on in Netflix, this was my mentality of how can I improve this thing for me and the people working on this product? How can I do that? What are the key points? How can I make something useful? And in my own time and time of work, I went and and crushed out something that was awesome. And now I'm happy I did it. To all my senior engineers who are more experienced than me, thank you for taking uh, care of younger folks. You're a guide who, uh, let's see, you are the guide who will lead them to greatness. I hope you're able to teach or uh, learn to teach the younger folks some valuable lessons which uh, may help them in the future. Be kind to those under you. They will surely repay your kindness and learn from each other for the younger generation is building so many cool new things that soon you might have a hard time keeping up with us. It's an interesting take. I do think that the one of the most important things I've ever done is teaching. I don't like teaching. I truly don't. But I think it's one of the greatest activities to partake in. Being able to explain something to somebody who thinks differently than you makes you understand the topic in a very deep way. He's definitely, oh, he's most certainly a kid. Uh, I mean, the fact that uh, he thinks that the younger generation is building cool things. <laughs> I, okay, I've seen React server components. I'm not buying it. Uh, I have taken a lot. Let's see. I have taken a lot over the years. I have relentlessly consumed a lot of knowledge from varying sources. I've watched lectures from MIT and read developer notes in Chinese. I've seen so many tutorials on YouTube and read so many articles on blog sites that I feel it unfair to keep my knowledge shared with me a secret. 
Those who helped me did so with the purpose of improving society and advancing mankind, I believe, and must do my part by returning the favor and helping those who may find this article useful. So the danger of an article like this is that ultimately what you're doing is you're making work or knowledge or self-improvement your God. And its demands are ever and unsatiated. And I find that to be a very dangerous thing. So you really do have to be careful about making work, self-improvement, any of those things God. Because that's not a good God. That's a bad God. That's a God that will never be satisfied. That's a God that will constantly drive you. And you'll end up getting sick. You'll end up losing a lot of life. You'll end up missing out on opportunities that are significantly better. I love the drive for knowledge, though. I love the willingness to do hard things. I love that you favor hard work. I think that's good. I think that's a really, really good, good mentality. But not all hard. The problem is, is that hard work can become a drug, just like any other drug. And it can enslave you just as hard as any other drug. And you will affect those around you and yourself. So you got to learn to say no and do the hard thing for you, which is to not do it. Being in control of yourself, your actions, and your responses are very, very, very hard. That's what I say. If you in here can't sit down for 10 hours and crush out a problem undisturbed and do it well, then I think you have a problem. And if you can't help but to constantly work, I think you have a problem. If you are not in control of yourself, I think you have a problem, right? You've just let the lower will win, whatever that lower will looks like, right? Be, be the dog, not the tail. Do you know what I mean? There you go. That's my, that's my opinion on this article. Uh, just like everything, I think, there's, I think there's meat and I think there's bones. Uh, eat, the, eat the fish, spit the bones. Eat the fish. Spit the bones.